Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the last episode of Follow Your Path Season 1. My name is Abdul Abed. I'm a Surgical Pathology Fellow at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. And I have with me uh, my co-hosts for this uh, season, um, Casey Chuko, who is uh, a transitional year resident in Michigan, uh, Meredith Herman. She is a medical student in Michigan at Michigan State University, and Virginia Fernandez who's a student at NOVA in, uh, in Broward County in Florida. Um, I just wanted to say a few words before I open up the floor for more questions and, and discussion. Uh, I, I had wanted to start a podcast since 2010 or, and 11 uh, when I was a medical student myself. However, I did not, at the time, I was not thinking in terms of uh, a medical-related podcast. I was going through... Um, uh, depression phase in my med school and I was I was falling back on my second love which is history so I wanted to do something about like the history of the country where I was in I wanted to talk about that with a friend of mine sort of like um, this, this some dis, uh, dispelling some myths and like like uh, giving some uh, I would say alternate history so to speak and that never happened oh some of that happened but uh that never came to the fore um i didn't i didn't have enough technology or any input or any editor in a way so some episodes were recorded none of them ever made it uh public then uh, about seven or eight years later when i was a resident in pathology in galveston i wanted to do a podcast such as this um in which I talk to different subspecialists and ask them what makes their specialty so unique. Um, and uh, that never happened. I mean, it has happened now, but at the time it did not happen. I didn't have enough resources or know-how, or I would say the, um, I didn't have the strong enough will to continue doing that project either. Um, and then I wanted to start another podcast, number three, which was going to be uh, with a friend of mine who uh, lives in England. And we wanted to do something about uh, like an expat experience for people from my country. And we wanted to talk about stuff that we have been through and like what people like us or or people who are like outside our country, who, who what do they go through? What are their issues? Because uh, uh, not a lot of people were talking about that. That never happened either. Uh, so <laughs> after going through all of this, uh, I, um, I was fortunate enough to meet Meredith uh, at UPMC. Well, she was a uh, she was doing an aware rotation, and she was like, "I think you should do this." And I was like, "Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I can." <laughs> I mean, I have been thinking about these things for so long, and uh, then I was when I thought a little more about it, I I, I thought I was like. I, uh, the podcasting somehow in the U.S. at least is is becoming a very uh, lonely male profession kind of thing, and I didn't want to do that. Like I didn't want to be like the guy in his basement just like ranting or <laughs> doing stuff like that. I mean, I know there are some nice people doing that, but I didn't want to be that person. So I asked her to be a co-host so that number one because she is also a medical student, so she brings a very different perspective to these things, and not just because because of uh, because of gender, but also because of a different viewpoint um, uh, from my own. And then we were sitting at a Chinese buffet uh, in Pittsburgh when a medical student from University of South Florida uh, recommended or or suggested that we give it a name, follow your path, and. Uh, so his name, his first name was Neil. I never found out his last name. So wherever you are, Neil, if you're listening, thank you very much for this session. <laughs> uh, and then the, uh, once we had the name and we had the co-host, then the fun part started, which was uh, looking for guests and scheduling for guests. And uh, how are we going to record this? What platform are we going to use? Um, and we have been through a bunch. This is our fourth platform i would believe in the last three months we started off with mm -hmm, then we went to zoom uh sorry this is the third one so this is yeah this is the third one uh, uh, i also went through a bunch of uh hardware uh things like i bought different uh, microphones and like headphones and uh, a lot of them were returned because they were not very good, unfortunately. Uh, I guess I, I didn't have enough budget to buy like, high-end stuff. Um, I'm still a fellow. Um, uh, so 
the, the scheduling was hard because everyone that we are going to talk to are practicing pathologists. They're busy. Uh, and it's it takes like even taking 30 minutes out of your time a day, it's, it's hard. And I want to thank every single person who responded to my emails. Many of them had never heard from me. They didn't know who I was. But that is I think that is a magic of pathology that people are kind and they volunteer and they're willing to talk to a stranger such as myself uh, and they want to give advice to medical students and residents. Um, and that was scheduling was 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 harder initially, uh, but eventually we got a, I, I got to I, I started using Doodle and this thing called Find Time in Outlook, where, where people could select time slots that they liked because otherwise it was just a lot of back and forth emails. And if anyone anyone who knows me knows that I hate emails, so I was just like I I, I can't do this back and forth too much. It's 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 annoying. Um, but that was that was good, and we did almost 26 interviews. Um, most of our the people that we interviewed uh, were in academia, which sort of is a function of uh, the fact that that as a resident or as a fellow, most of the people who I interact with are in academia because I trained at an academic institution, and I'm I'm still doing that. Not all people who train in pathology do that. There are a few programs in the U.S. who have uh, private practice places attached to their residency programs, but most are uh, primarily academic. Um, and we had people from. Uh, I was I was looking that we have people from almost all over the U.S. who who we did interviews with. Uh, there are some common themes that I want to uh, mention, and then I want to talk to you guys about what what your thoughts were. So one thing that I noticed was a lot of people, much more than I thought, were. Uh, post sophomore did post sophomore fellowships uh, in pathology, and I was, I was that was something odd for me. Like like not odd because it it's it's um, odd because number one I uh, I'm an IMG so while I was in Pakistan I had never even heard of what a PSF is, and the first time I heard was when I was a resident, and I believe it was Emily Towery who is now i believe somewhere in the in one of the Bo in boston programs she i knew that she was doing a bsf and one other person uh, that i saw on twitter and i was intrigued and but i didn't know that so many of the luminaries and pathologies had also done bsf uh, stuff which was which was uh, interesting uh, to know um I'll, and another thing that i noticed was many people that we interviewed who are now experts in their fields when they started off as residents they didn't know that they were going to do that that particular field and they had the opportunity they saw an opportunity they saw an opening and they took it uh, they were not initially wanting to be x y or z pathologist but but they saw that there was an opportunity in their program or they had a mentor who they found a mentor who was was uh, was an expert in their field or who was an excellent teacher or who was an excellent mentor and then they just went that way and they are now experts, like world-renowned experts in, in that particular field that they initially didn't even choose. So, so that, I think, is, it's a learning moment for, for everyone, including myself, that to, to take opportunities when you can. Uh, another thing that I learned was for slightly smaller subspecialties where there are not a lot of people, uh, um, everyone was very enthusiastic about um, sharing resources so that if you are interested in some specialty that is not as big as, let's say, for example, Durham or GI, uh, then you can join their societies, uh, you can use the resources that they have, and people obviously are very welcoming, and you can email people. Like, people were willing to give out their emails on the podcast. They wanted to hear from everyone. They wanted to know uh, if anyone is interested, they're willing to help. So. Again, that I think is also what I attribute to the magic of pathology. So um, I will. I, I, and now I want to open the floor to Casey about like his thoughts, his highlights, what were some of his highlights, and what can be improved, and whatever he wants to say. Yeah, definitely. So, man, this is uh, this podcast has been a wonderful venture. You know, I applaud you. I you know, do I applaud Meredith of Virginia. I mean, I, everyone who was able to take some time it's uh you know my path to path so to speak uh has taken me through a transitional year intern um as a transitional year intern doing a bunch of general medicine rotations all over again but um 
but throughout this year, I've been able to do some pathology rotations. And I don't know if I said this story before, I've said it to some people, but you know, my path to path really um, began once I actually got connected to Meredith. And she said, Casey, Casey, you got to get on path Twitter, man. Twitter, there's something yeah. here. <laughs> and I was like, I've never done Twitter. I was like, all right. I mean, I don't know what to do. I'm going to put myself out there. And you have this amazing community, right? Of pathologists, residents, fellows, med students. And, you know, it's to me, um, I have very difficult time walking away from football. I looked at myself as a football player for many years. That's something that I did through high school, through college. I always saw myself playing in the NFL, right? And that just wasn't the reality. Um, so when I started medical school, I was still kind of conflicted with, you know, the fact that I am interested in mess. I'm interested with helping people, but I'm still a football player. And like, that was my people. And I need to find my people all over again now. Yeah. Um, and having gone through this process, having listened to the podcast, having done some interviews, I finally feel like I'm, I'm where I'm meant to be right now in, 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 in this career. And I think in this uh, walk of life, and I think that's something that's so special about this podcast, what you've done is you've given people opportunities to just talk about themselves, talk about why they do what they do, why they love what they do. Um, because I think pathology is one of those fields that just a lot, a lot of medical students, you don't get that exposure to um, in regards to as a career, you know, and I think that's so important. Um, you know, one, of, I think something that is, um, come to be, I think, a passion of mine is um, always something that I'm really interested in learning more about as I move forward is bone soft tissue path and derm path. And this podcast has inspired me to do my own podcast. And that's, you know, so far looking looking to uh, be started after the new year, which I'm so excited about. Awesome. I remember Dr. Gardner said, um, when he was talking about sarcoma pathology, and, um, and I'm not, I'm not going to forget these words because it just like jumped right out at me. He said why he, you know, why he likes it or he loves it. The sarcomas, they're just, it's, the, it's a rare and rareness and esotericness or rare and esoteric. I think those are the words. And I said to myself, God, perfect. I'm sold. That's all you needed to tell me. And I just feel like that's exactly what I'm attracted to. And that's something that within pathology you see a bunch of different things you see the zebras you see the horses and you you sit back behind the scenes and you talk with each other and you collaborate like a, like a team like a family all for the you know points of trying to help patients out and help other doctors out so this is a tremendously cool field this is a great platform and i tell you what man i uh you know i'm i'm, I'm blessed to be here and be a part of it we're blessed to have all right too. meredith <laughs> yeah. I love every time he tells that story. Remember when we were talking, I was like, "Be a path- you're meant to be a pathologist. Let's get you on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> and then like within a few tweets, I was like, he's going to be a celebrity. I can just tell it's happening. <laughs> Casey was a celebrity overnight. Um, and that's, we also <laughs> yeah, on Twitter too. And that's how I got to know Abdul actually on, on Twitter. So um, no, this was such a great season. And when Abdul, you know, had the idea, I was like, well, this is, you know, this is actually really cool. We have a lot of subject material to cover and a lot of voices to share. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of crap, we got that, you know, follow your path idea at the Chinese restaurant with a Dr. Ho and, and Neil, the dermatology student who was a pint of derm. Um, and uh, we're like, well, we can just record it like on our you know, computers and we'll get, you know, speakers. And Abdul's like, can you be my co-host? I'm like, sure. I, I've never done this but okay i uh, will do it and so now i'm the the sound engineer as it likes to say um so it's just been fun to to learn a new skill and you know edit these episodes and hear everyone's story um as you guys were talking i jotted out a few ideas um you know some themes that that spoke to me was that we all have a story to tell and it's you know obvious we've all had different traje trajectories in life and different paths to, so to speak um, you know, into pathology. And some people had other specialties that they were in and transitioned into pathology or mentors or some, you know, life-changing event and that sparked their interest to go into pathology. Another was that, you know, we can all learn from each other's experiences and no one's experience is the same. And I think every speaker we had on this podcast truly had 
their own unique story to share. And we're glad that we were able to help share their, their story with others. And also there, there's no clear path into pathology, you know, follow your path, your path, not someone else's path, but your own path. It, it, I know it's very like generic, but we truly have had our own stories and our own downs and ups and, you know, trials and error going through this. And you know, we've all risen above it and become who we are today. So it was just a joy to hear everyone's stories and what they'd been through. Um, I think the thing that stuck out to me the most was all these unique cases that people shared that um, whether it was like Dr. Adkins own breast cancer case that she saw um, or, you know, you know, Dr. Gardner's you know, skin cancer case, you know, BST cases. Um, I mean, everyone's unique perspective on pathologies and how they were able to discover new pathologies and name a new entity. And I mean, it goes on and on. Um, so we hope you all can, go back on the season and reflect on those new cases. Um, so with that, someone else can take it away. <laughs> yeah, Virginia. Sure, so I mean, um, it's honestly been a privilege for me to be invited to do some of these episodes. I didn't know about Path Twitter either. I found out about it this year, at the beginning of the year, thanks to one of my, uh, I guess, upperclassmen who already graduated and also went into Path. And I had never used Twitter and if I didn't really want to use Twitter, <laughs> but, um, you know, I did it. And obviously I met all of you guys through Twitter and tons of other people. So honestly, it was the best thing that happened to me for my path, you know, towards path. Uh, I guess I'm a little different because I knew that I was going to do pathology back in college, you know, and uh, I had a exposure uh, to the medical examiners for a, a, a long time. So I went into med school knowing that that's what I was going to do. And, um, you know, like Casey said, you don't really get a lot of exposure to PATH when you're in medical school. So it wasn't until my fourth year that I actually got to do rotations. And I also fell in love with bone and soft tissue um, when I did a rotation uh, with uh, Dr. Rosenberg at UM. And, you know, it's obviously one of the fields that I'm definitely looking forward to going into. And, uh, you know, there's one thing that I've learned from doing uh, this podcast is that you know, as Meredith said, everyone has their own path. And it's been really nice to get to know all these pathologists and what drove them to go into a specific field or even to go into pathology when some of them didn't even consider it in the first place until, you know, the very end or by chance, you know, they happened to find out about the, the field and fell in love with it and fell in love with the uh, diagnosis uh, and all the all the different ways we diagnose disease now. And how it's all driven, you know, by pathology. Um, but yeah, that's what kind of, you know, I guess stuck out to me the most and their passion. And and uh, actually one uh, one thing that I actually really enjoyed was uh, we did a recent podcast with um, Dr. Reyes, the pediatric pathologist, and uh, he actually showed us <laughs> his uh, most interesting case that he had. And, yeah, he uh, actually you know, shared a screen. Yeah. She actually shared his screen with us, like not just like yeah. describe it. He actually showed us the case. <laughs> yeah, it was, and it was nice to actually see, you know, what, how, you know, how he came across this case, what he got out of the case, and you know, the the papers that were published because of this case, you know, being so rare. And uh, I thought that maybe, you know, obviously not practical for a podcast that you listen to, but it would be so nice, you know, in the future to have other uh, pathologists that we interview, you know, bring that to the to the table and have us, you know, seeing, you know, what these, these cases were actually like, especially us that were, you know, in the field of pathology. Um, but um, other than that, I mean, it's been a privilege and uh, it's... It's so nice to continue, uh, you know, to get to know other pathologists and spread the word about this very small community uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, get more people to come into this field. Yeah, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Virginia. Uh, so two moments that that sort of like I would say I, I'm, I'm a very uh, cynical person. So there are very few things that actually move me. Uh, but uh, Dr. Dr. Atkins story. Uh, when she shared it, and it was after Meredith, do you remember? It was after well, we had we had almost finished our like recording, and she was like, "Oh, can I tell that story?" And we were like, "I mean, yes, you can. Like, we, there's no compulsion on you not. If you want to tell it, like, it's it's for the rest of the world. You can, they can listen." And she she shared it, so that was like, that was a moving thing. Like, like you get to 
see this person, know this person, and they have been through this experience. And the second one was, as Virginia, you mentioned, uh, Dr. Reyes's case. It was, it was like, like I, like I don't know if, if it comes through in the podcast, but I was just lost for words. Like, I was like, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I am just shook. Like, I, I don't know what to say. I'm just like, like odd overall. Like, I, I just, I just don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, so I got, I got emotional with that. Uh, it was, it was. Uh, it was one of those moments. Some other themes that I, I saw, and and the, something that comes out is pathologists are, are usually, and I don't want to harp on about misconceptions as as you guys may be like tired of listening that pathologists are this or that. But some really really interesting people. Like we had two people who trained in music. We had two people who do theater, active like still do or, or have done in the past. Uh, so we have people who like we have people doing all kinds of like interesting stuff, not just pathology, which they are very good at, but they also do like, actually we have three people who did music. Uh, one of two of them are trained and the third one does uh, on the side. And it's just like, so interesting to know that our field has so many like uh, hidden talents. Like, like uh, I don't know if you guys, I don't know if you guys are aware of the Engage Leadership Academy that the CAP does in uh, Chicago in November or so every year, I encourage you and uh, any of our listeners who are interested in leadership training to go there for a weekend and uh, do that. And it's open for residents. So uh, unfortunately, medical students are not yet involved in the project. But once you become residents, which which all three of you are going to be next year, uh, I would recommend that you apply for that. Um, and so there on the first night, they, I remember when I was there, they asked everyone in the room and it was like residents, fellows, attendings of different, like junior attendings and senior attendings, like all the whole gamut. They asked everybody, uh, what would you do if you were not a pathologist? And everyone had such interesting answers. Like there were like so many different answers. Like I was, I was just amazed at what these people are capable of, like, they're amazing people. Another thing that I, I noticed uh, uh, was that pathologists. Uh, this is it's, this is a within the pathology community joke that uh, pathologists are tied to their coffee cups, like they're always drinking coffee, uh, uh, which may or may not be true. Uh, but at least during our interviews, since we get to see a lot of people in their offices. Uh, I saw at least three or four people, and some of them were caught on video. There were like diet cokes there, so I don't know if if those people are not drinking coffee or or they are supplementing the caffeine that they're getting from there. So, so those were some like minor observations that I had. And uh, if you guys have any like thoughts, uh, any observations, you guys are any of you, uh, you're more than welcome to share. Actually, yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that. Uh... Pathologists tend to have hidden talent, uh, but it's funny how it's all artistic most yeah. of the time. You have either people who love to draw or paint, you know, what they see under the microscope, but you also have people who did theater or still do theater or, or did music. I actually used to do theater myself, <laughs> so <laughs> I guess there's a trend going on in pathology yeah. where, you know, or maybe that's just one of the things that draws us to the field, you know, the, mm. the, the artistic uh, part of, you know, this profession so yeah. i'm definitely not surprised that that's uh that's a thing yeah yeah definitely, yeah, definitely. I, I think you no know, especially what i've um i think seen throughout this past uh, however many months now you know since this my path the path and um is that people is not afraid to be themselves be who they are express who they are in so many different ways you know um you know some some people are great musicians they're they're, they're, they're the actors or actresses they're artists they're athletes, football player, right? And I think that's so important. Um, I think for anyone anywhere is um, to be able to be yourself and to feel comfortable being yourself. You know, I've, I've told this before to many and um, if there are any medical students listening, I really hope they take these words to heart that if it's not pathology, fine, but you find yourself in a field, in a walk of life where you know that you can just be your unapologetic self and people will love you, respect you, work with you for who you are and then vice versa, right? Once you're getting into these thought processes or patterns of, hmm, man, I, I, have to, I have to change how I walk a little bit. So maybe I should start wearing these types of clothes. 
it, you know, it, it, take a step back and recognize that maybe you're not where you're meant to be and that's okay. Um, so that's just something that I think has really stuck out to me and I'm happy, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be a part of this. I think this fun, this fun party of folks. <laughs> it's always a party of pathology. That's true. No, I, yeah. Meredith also paints. Yeah. So. I also paint. And, um, you know, I, I remember like talking to a professor and like, well, usually people will go into pathology. They usually have a creative side. And I was like, well, that's, it's interesting. Um, but uh, what I was going to say is, you know, the individuality and how pathology really embraces that and how we are all very unique in our own ways. Um, you know, like I'm sure Casey and uh, Virginia have noticed during interviews, you know, they always skip to the hobbies and they're like, they're always so excited about your hobbies and it could be the smallest things. And it's like, they are really excited that you play an instrument or that you do art or you do football or they love that and they look for that too. And I think it's a testament of our specialty and the people in it. Um, they embrace that and want you to continue doing those things and uh, so do whatever it can, you know, they can to support that. Um, so that that's just one of my final thoughts um, about following your path yeah. and yeah. following who you are. I was yeah. about to say, I have talked about our, my, my, my fiance of mine's pet blue dwarf shrimp in every single interview. <laughs> so, uh, yes, again, any medical students listening, you should put hobbies in the hobby section of your interview and be excited about those. <laughs> oh, I've had some great talks about the shrimp. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's definitely a hot topic during interviews. My hobbies get asked about all the time. And I love it because it's easy to talk about them because they're things that I enjoy. So. Yes, definitely yeah, put yeah. them in your hobbies and don't be afraid to put things that maybe you think might not be, you know, the most appropriate things to do. But if you like to play video games and that's how you spend your time unwinding, do it and talk about what game, video games you like. And yeah, you know, anything that inspires you, definitely I would include. Yeah, yeah. And and you can you all three of you can put a uh, podcaster in your uh, hobbies as well, if you can. now. <laughs> so. yeah, you know, I've asked them up a few times. I mean, people have asked, oh, what about this podcast? And they actually do listen to it. So, I mean, it, it has uh, brought up a lot of question points. <laughs> okay, so one last question for all of you. Um, what was the weirdest, no, not weirdest, or I would say slightly odd time that you shared the podcast with like someone who would not have who is not from pathology and you shared that you did a podcast with them and they may or may not have listened to it so like, let me go first my physical therapist uh <laughs> i don't know how i mentioned it but they emailed me later they were like can you send me a link to your podcast i was like yeah sure definitely <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow you know actually uh that would be my husband because he went through my twitter and he was like <laughs> Oh my God, you do a pathology podcast. <laughs> and he was like super excited. And, you know, it's funny because I hadn't even mentioned it to him. And I was like, yeah, I told you I do a podcast. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to listen to it on the way to work. How cool is that? And he's not, he, he's an internal medicine. He's an internal medicine resident. So, you know, far away from wanting to be, you know, yeah. interested in any of this, but he was just so excited about it. Yeah. About to say, yeah, my uh, my fiance has definitely scrolled through my uh, my Twitter before, and uh, just some of the stuff. She's like, "Oh my, Casey, you do this, you do this." Like, "Oh my god!" So it's yeah, hundred percent. She's gonna be. She's applying for family medicine. Hashtag FM Revolution uh, twenty twenty three. <laughs> I remember uh, yeah. interviews, you know, scheduled and. My fiance was like, how do you have time to do all this? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just making it work. Um, but they're like, yeah, you're like, you're not like, what? like, really? Like, how many more interviews? I'm like, I got interviewed this time and this time. So when you're coming home from work, just be quiet because I have another. And but he was so supportive, um, but, you know, made sure to listen to some of the episodes and was like, that's, that's really that's so cool that you're able to do that. Um, so you just kind of spread the joy of podcasting and, you know, see what goes on behind the scenes to make it possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, one of my friends who is not, uh, she is in medicine, she is a nurse, uh, uh, shout out to Kelly. Uh, she also listened to our podcast and she's, uh, I believe she's a hospice nurse now. Like she, uh, she trained at, um, at UTMB where I was a resident and we, we, we met while we were playing volleyball. 
so we have sort of like kept in touch for since since like then and uh so she she reached out to me she was like oh i i want to listen about this topic i was like oh yeah i'm glad to send you the link to that particular like field of pathology if you're interested so i was like wow this is uh this is interesting i'm i'm glad so yeah that's that's wonderful all right guys uh so just a, a little bit of an announcement for people who may be listening so this is the end of our season one uh for season two we are going a little different we will be talking to different um, um medical professionals about burnout and physician wellness uh we are not experts neither of us is an expert uh however we want that's something that that is a topic that is close to my heart as someone who has been through those things i am really interested in learning about um what the landscape looks like what what it what like how does it affect our specialty because it's a big thing uh something that is not talked about in, in at least in general public in medicine now it is that the uh, suicide rate for physicians is much higher for more, both male and female physicians than the general population and the rates of uh, depression and other uh, uh, mental health issues is also much higher because of what we go through uh, during our training during our work um, and uh, so in that vein we wanted to talk to people um, who are some of them are in uh, are, are are talking to uh, people who are depressed or who are maybe suicidal and we want to talk to some people who can uh, basically tell us more about some things about physician wellness that are not talked about yet or some things that may help in that regard um, so please stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this season and uh, your feedback is always welcome. And I hope you continue listening for our second season as well. All right. All right, gang. Uh, thank you very much. And you guys all have a good rest of your day. All right. Thank you guys.